I invite you to join me in your hearts if you'd like to as I, as I lead us in prayer. So let's pray. Our Father, today most of us have the day off from work to spend time with family, fire up the grill, and simply relax. But the members of our armed forces are working hard today to ensure that we have long weekends in our future. Today is a day to stop and solemnly remember that since the founding of our great nation, more than one million Americans have died in the service of their country. These brave men and women made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of freedom, liberty, and the values that make our nation great. Today is dedicated to those brave men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces who gave their lives to ensure the freedom of this great nation. It is important to recognize the unthinkable sacrifice they made so that the memory of these brave men and women live on. With the help of writer Susan Smith, I would like to read a poem to express my thankfulness. To all our veterans, far and near, we thank you for your service for all those years. You sacrificed your time and some gave your life. You preserved our freedom by willingly paying the price. Many of you were sent overseas. You were wounded in battles with scars and disease. But courageous and brave, you weathered the storm. You braved every battle with faith and beyond. So no one stands alone. We walk hand in hand. Remember, we are with you. Together we shall stand. On this Memorial Day, let us express our love and thanks for the sacrifice you paid, you served in honor for many years and days, and we will never forget how you were strong and brave. So I'll be short. I first want to thank God for holding off the rain and making the forecasters wrong again, allowing us the privilege of visiting each of the cemeteries and then sitting in our beautiful common and the, and the gazebo. I'd also like to thank the Veterans Committee, especially Mike Whalen for planning and delivering this event every year, Colonel Wilkinson and all the veterans for your service. Thank you very much. Over the past few months during the campaign season, I heard people say repeatedly that Hopkinton's changed. It's not the same. It doesn't feel right. It's lost its appeal. To that I say, I think they're wrong. I believe the reasons that people are moving here now are the same reasons I moved here 20 years ago. Today, people are still hoping to be part of this vibrant, accepting, and generous community. These qualities are evident in gatherings like this. The respect, the reverence, and the love of community that I witnessed here today and every Memorial Day here in Hopkinton remind me of how proud I am to be part of this nation in this very town. As many of you know, I've always said that this is my favorite day in Hopkinton because this is Hopkinton. Some people say it's the marathon, but this is Hopkinton. I think there's room this weekend for both leisure and remembrance. The key is to remember the why. Why today is a national holiday. Today we stand together to commemorate the sacrifices of American military men and women who have laid down their lives in service to this nation. It is worthy to reflect for a few moments on how we as a nation came to observe Memorial Day. The observance of this day was born of compassion and empathy in the midst of the horror and destruction of the Civil War. As the Civil War raged, grieving mothers, wives, and loved ones tended to graves of fallen soldiers. Soon, the tradition of a decoration day for the graves of fallen soldiers spread. After the war in 1866, shopkeepers in Waterloo, New York, closed their shops for a day to honor all soldiers killed in the Civil War, Union and Confederate alike. It was a gesture of healing and reconciliation in a land ripped apart by conflict. General Logan proclaimed May 30th as Decoration Day in 1868, and 14 years later in 1882, the nation observed its first Memorial Day. <laughs> 